<laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to the Cool Crone. I have Val from Dragonfly Crystals with me and Cleo the Seer. And if you read the little crawler at the bottom, you'll see that I am telling you to subscribe to Dragonfly Crystals and to the Cool Crone. And um, I hope everybody will do that and give us a thumbs up. And so I've got my sister Cleo is with us too. Hi, Cleo. Thank you for joining us. And Val, of course, is here, our guest of honor. And we are going to be taking um, uh, questions and stuff in the chat. But first off, I just want to have a little chat with Val. Oh. Not that she's done anything wrong. <laughs> we just, we just want to get spot. We just want to get to know Val a little bit more. Yeah. So, um, Val, what I really am dying to know is how did you get started doing all this? Oh, and all, by all this, I mean like channeling and reading and that stuff. How did you get started? Uh, you know, when, you know, I grew up in a metaphysical family. My mom was very into all this kind of stuff. So, Part of what we used to say in our little meditations is I am a channel of pure white light of divine source, or I am a channel of the pure white light of the Christ light, whatever, Christ consciousness. So mm -hmm. it like <laughs> perpetuated itself into me being a channel over so many years. And I would say probably when I was hit my forties, uh, in particular, I was already had a lot of different healing modalities and <clears throat> I worked with people, but in my own meditations, I'd get tons of information and I would write all this channeling down. And it was really for me, it was my own personal information and things would come in from beings and I get energy uh, techniques, healing ideas and things from their Arcturians from all over the place. And so I've been channeling like that for years and years. And suddenly now with all this crazy energy coming in, this high vibrational frequency stuff coming in, in 2022, I just had this urge to make a YouTube to add my channeling. <laughs> so yeah. that's what I did. And, uh, you know, all these things came from that. But um, yeah, it, it, they wanted me to come out of the closet. And because <laughs> I am definitely not an, you know, one of those outgoing people. Uh, so I had to you know, come a little bit out of my comfort zone. Although when you're coming from spirit, from your soul, it doesn't feel as scary or hard because you're not in that place of fear. No matter what you're presented to bring forward, it seems normal and natural. So that's that's where I'm at. But that's wow. kind of how it all started. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, think, I think when you also when you connect with like-minded people, it helps you just relax and yeah. allow. Yeah. Right. And that, yeah. that is just an amazing experience. Just yeah, amazing. It really is. When so you're, yeah. You when do you're, cards as well. How did that come about? When I'm sorry, what how did what come cards, about? Cards doing cards. How did that no, come about? No, I just had this, it's just a progression. And I had this um all these things in meditation, all these guides mm -hmm. guiding me along and I needed to take some classes regarding tarot cards. It just happened. This is how it all evolved. And all these pieces came up for me to this, these components that make up what I'm doing now. And you don't know why you're guided to do it. You don't know what's going on, but you're going ahead with the program because you feel like, oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing to stop you from doing it. So, um, yeah, tar tarot, learning tarot was one of the pieces, and I know it's to um, gain that platform with the community and be here with everyone, because I did channel what my platform was in 2022, 
and everyone's platform changes every year. It's kind of like what your foundation for the year is, and you can channel that for yourself. Um, and mine was that community, that coalescing of the community. And it, they showed a vision of like, I don't know, it was almost like jellyfish coming down like umbrellas. And like that, um, it was a weird kind of thing. I don't remember the whole thing, but I did write it down. But it really was about gathering together that community. Well, I didn't have to gather it because you're all here. <laughs> I just had to do my thing and show up. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, the tarot cards are part of how we, you know, can reach everyone energetically. And, um, you know, I love that we share energy back and forth with people in the chat and in this community. It's just amazing with all of that, these beautiful people. You know, I love that. And, yeah i mean you can't make this up this is a great community mm -hmm. so. no kidding so when you're doing the when you're doing the tarot does the tarot have anything to do with the actual channeling that you've come up with uh you know when i do the tarot uh i look at the pictures mainly even not the book meaning of them necessarily and i get some intuitive hit from that for whoever I'm reading for or whatever the question is. And um, yes, so everyone channels all the time. We're always channeling. And you guys channel like crazy. And I am doing it too. You may, you may not even realize you're doing it. You're channeling at work even. So it's all that information that comes through, it just comes in your head and shh, out your mouth and you go, oh, that was good. How did I come up with that? <laughs> well, yeah, really. I mean, the, 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 people, the, the entities that you're channeling, um, I'm, you know, Colleen's question, I, I was going to ask kind of the same thing, but mm -hmm. I was like, okay, you're asking, you, you come across somebody that's talking to you and giving you messages. First of all, how in the world you write all this stuff down as it's happening? I don't know, because I think if I tried to do that, I would lose the momentum. But on the other hand, how are these, are this, are these spirit guides that are contacting you? Uh, here, here's how it is. I have my team, and uh, my team has been with me for a pretty long time, um, and I know who they are energetically, not necessarily by name. Like, there's one group of beings that I call R9, and it's a, just a collective, of, uh, like all, all, almost all my guides, but not all of them. And then there's some, some group that comes in, and they call themselves All That Is. So I have a, these components of things, but that's not what happens. When I go into meditation and I ask Archangel Michael to protect me, I surround myself with the light and I ground myself into Mother Earth and I bring in the white light. And as I am talking to source or as the source energy shows up and I'm there, I can feel pressure coming down and that pressure tells me that some other beings are there as well who may have a message and because i always say no you know only the pure white light of divine source the white light of truth and um you know that essence of the divine source can only come in then i know no matter who comes in, they're going to have to be that vibration or, you know. So I've only gotten the most beautiful messages. And what comes in is I get the impression of who that is or they tell me. The words form in my head because I'm claircognizant. And I have just gone to a pen to write it down just because I thought it would be a lot easier than trying to speak and do a recorder, but I've tried it a few times and there's a little difference when I'm just channeling 
in and saying it versus I used to say it as I was writing it, but now if I just channel it, I can feel it's not as seated in and I feel a little bit too involved. But if I just write it, it's like I really step out of the way and I'm just writing a word, a word, a word, a word, and I don't even know what they say till the end. It's not even makes sense. So yeah, I know yeah. that eventually that it'll probably get to channeling live, but it won't be trans channeling. I'll be here. <laughs> so. yeah. You know, a lot of mediums do something physical like that, like writing or doodling or something while they're, yeah, while they're channeling, and it does help the flow. It and really, some, really does. Some also will suggest that you begin this process by allowing yourself to do automatic writing. Yes. You know, right. just meditation and then just allow your hand to just move on the paper if it wants to or not, and eventually then that helps you identify who you're talking to or you or like my girlfriend started with automatic writing oh. i i actually taught her how to do the automatic writing it didn't come naturally to me but i knew the steps to help her yeah figure that one out that was weird and um you know now she 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 did the automatic writing for a few months and at first it was just gobbledygook and it just got stronger and stronger that she was actually able to write this big loopy hand that we could read back. And um, she had a connection with her mother who had passed and her mother gave her a lot of really good uh, messages. Um, and then eventually she just put the pen down and said, I don't need it. I right. can put it up here. And, and I was like, more power I, to you. <laughs> I have to tell the story too, because Carrie of... Uh, O'Donnell of um, Tarot Soul Writer. Actually, I took her class, and that's what she does is a form of automatic writing. Not quite; it's still in the same category. But what she has you do is you're you're pulling a a card on a subject, and then you just start writing. You write what you see in the card, and pretty soon, channeling comes through. Yeah. And what happened to me when I took her classes? the beams would come through like all that is came through and he was saying all kinds of profound things yeah. here, I, I think that's uh, someone else <laughs> and that was about the time when all these beings were bringing messages forward that kind of opened that door to say okay these beings are stepping through i can take their messages um that I, the person that comes through is the person I take the message from. It's not going through anyone else. It it's whoever comes forward and has a message. So um, I'm just, you know, I it's just pick it up. I don't know why, and it's strong. It's powerful. It's not like I have to work at it. It's fun because it's easy. I've been doing it. It's fascinating, Val. It's fascinating yeah. what you do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I've been, I've been, I've looked at some of your videos and stuff and I kept thinking, what are you doing? Are you just walking around the house? Yes, and I mean, because it isn't hard. I, I, I'm in my meditation. I finish up and I ask, is there anyone, I'm in that meditative state and I ask, is there anyone who'd like to step forward and give me a message? Or I say, this is the subject. Does anyone want to come through with that? And, uh, you know, someone will always step forward, whether it's an archangel or an ascended master or who, whomever it is. And um, it literally is so easy. It's like riding a bike for me. So it's like and no effort whatsoever. Cool. <laughs> effort to type it up and tell everyone on a video. <laughs> That's why it would really be fun to get to the point where I could just channel and maybe what i have to do is write while i'm channeling because that connection is a little bit through a fit ego filter more than when i'm just writing the words i'm just writing words i don't even know what they are but when i have to say it out of my mouth and it's coming through i have to you know i've only done it about three four times now and um it's something that will probably eventually happen because I think 
um, it's really nice for people in the chat to be able to ask questions and be able to get an answer in real time. Yeah, so when you're when you're uh, like doing a reading and doing the tarot on on this platform, yeah. um, are you um, are these different entities are coming? Okay, my spirit guides. I'm thinking I know who my spirit guides are, and they're just you know an eclectic group of uh, kind of a motley crew of yeah. these spirit guides out there. But yeah. they're not. They don't come to me and say I am so and so. For is that what you get? Is my guys you get? never tell me. My guys don't tell me who they are. I don't have any names. I see color forms for it, their energy, and I kind of sense. But when I get like ascended masters like Babaji come to me and and impress their energy on me, I know who it is. Because throughout all these years, if I call on them, that's their energy for me, and that's what I sense. So I know. But literally. I'll ask, you know, because they're giving me a message. I ask if I if they don't say, but usually they're starting the message out with, you know, this is blah 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 blah. Yes, I have a message for you. Okay. And uh, that message is, you know, you can tell if that content is um, going to be helpful to people or not. And I've never had any content that wasn't helpful. They give a lot of good tips about energy and how to use it in this world and and um what helps you manifest and what helps you stay centered and um yeah i mean i've learned a lot i have to go back through and put titles saying you know keywords so we can go back through to those channelings and know what's inside the content um but that's another thing to do it's, it's really it's really fascinating what you do i just oh, I, mean, uh, I don't think of it as any there's so many people channeling that, well i know but yours is different yours is uh yeah. as far as i haven't seen everybody on youtube that does this but uh i feel like yours is different and that's why i kind of kind of centered on that i wanted to see what is what is she doing and not, I mean, you're so accomplished and you're, it's oh. so deceiving because, yeah, no, you are. And so no, you, are. you are, Val, you're very accomplished. Yeah. Oh, so when I was first looking at this, I thought, well, wait a minute. There's so much more to Val than just what I had seen originally. I mean, you've just got these different facets of things that you do that I'm just like, well, how did she ever figure that out? Knowing that you have a background with your family of doing this kind of stuff. So you probably, you've been doing it all like most of your life, right? A long time. Yes. Yeah. So that, I guess that helps too. Yeah. As an adult, though, when I was about 20 or 21 and I read my life in Tibet and I, I told this story before that I was reading about his John Edwin Dingle's journey at, the Himalayas to meet the his master and uh, I there was a gong the next morning that was sounding in the book and I this gong was like a real thing ringing in my head and all throughout my body and it was like I was there in this reverberation of this huge sound of this big gong ringing over and over and that's when it like i had this huge um awakening kind of like well you're online now <laughs> you know yeah. you could know all your time growing up oh xyz meditate blah 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 yoga yoga blah blah but until you experience um you know the, an, an awake an energetic awakening like that but of course, I've had, I could see angels when I was a kid. They'd, they'd direct me to do different things to help people. And I, you know, I, I had these experiences and I had an out of, out of the body experience when I was about four or five, five, five or six. I fell off my bike, split my chin open and went, you know, kind of like loopy. And I flew out of my body and I was just over my body watching everything while they took me to the hospital. 
that I mean I got to go out into the universe. I was out there in space and I knew the secrets of the universe. Here's this little kid who knew how everything worked because I was out of that body. And then when I went back in, I couldn't remember enough to tell adults that they should pay attention to what I was saying. And I rushed to tell them and they, oh, honey, she hit her head too hard. <laughs> of course. Of course. She hit her head too hard. <laughs> so anyway, there's all kinds, so many mystical experiences that happened. Um, <clears throat> But well, they, and they love, they love to do that kind of stuff with children anyway, because children are just so open and spontaneous. I, I was so young that, yes, I was totally, the minute I was out of my body, and my dad and this lady who was taking me to the hospital kept talking to me because they, they were probably afraid I was going unconscious. They didn't know what was going on. So I'd fly back into my body, answer them, and I'd be like, oh, please leave me alone. because so I flew out and... It's like there was no ceiling on the car. You could fly, you know, seem really high. And in the hospital, same thing. But I just zoom out there. I was everywhere. And yeah, so, you know, and I think if you would have told, told that to people that didn't understand what was going on, you'd gone to a different kind of hospital. Yeah, I, <laughs> I mean, this was back in the 50s. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I'd be going to the psychiatric ward. But I, but I know that myself, I've done this writing thing. Um, oh, God, it must have been like 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, after I got done with it, I was just like, God, this seems so, I seem, I, this seems so intelligent. What have I written? And so I read it and I thought, yeah, what the hell did that mean? I had no idea what it meant. Right. And so I never yeah. pursued it again, but I just thought, I don't, I don't know where that came from. And yeah. the thing you're talking about with the, like the gong at one point early on when I, you know, you, when going through an awakening, mm -hmm. definitely this was an awakening yeah. and uh, my spirit guide came through to me and it sounded like they were yelling. I mean, it got so loud <laughs> and I, I know now that what it was is that I was just so open to it. And so I didn't, yeah, I didn't know anything about spirit guides. I didn't know what was happening. You know, that's ooh, I thought it was nuts. But you know, when it got so lo loud, it was kind of like uh, some other spirit guide kind of stepped in and said, "Okay, we got to tone it down." And I just told him, I said, "Quit yelling at me." You know, they will <laughs> because you gave them some direction. They will definitely step. Oh yeah, they toned it right down. But I mean, that was. Uh, that was such an experience. Wow, so that, that, would be a, gone. I that, would be wild. that would be wild because mine happened after, you know, I'd been meditating for like an hour a day, X amount of, you know, years. And, you know, of course you're going to. Oh, I had no, I, I had no idea what I was doing. I was just, I was in a, opened up and. <laughs> oh, I was at a very critical place in my life and I was, yeah. uh, I just, I needed a lot of help and I had, it was a really a horrible time in my life. And you so know, that's when it happens, Cleo, when, yeah. when things are going, when it's a turbulent time, chaotic and whatever, it's like a, an opening happens that for you. And well, and I was looking right. for help and that's the only place I could find it. So, yeah. and it absolutely did. It absolutely, you know, yeah. I just, um, I've been into this ever since, but yeah. um yeah, I mean, you know, it's like it's like if you uh, like any of these people over here on chat that if they're thinking about, well, how do you get in touch with your spirit guides, which seems to be a regular question. Yeah, that I see, you know, that all that really you just meditate or you just don't even have to meditate. You just I, I found prayer helps and, uh, you know, just kind of uh, just letting go of everything so you allow this stuff to come in but sometimes like i said i mean they were yelling at me so it just came in so so much you know and it just kind of freaked me out it also kind of pissed me off your channel just opened up like boom exactly exactly but yeah. so anyway the thing you do with the channeling and the thing you do with the writing all this stuff down and stuff it's just it's really amazing that you can do that. I mean, it's I, just awesome. Really? Thank you. I 
I, it's funny how when you do something and it's easy, you don't, it's not like I don't value it because I do obviously, but I don't get involved in the value of it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I don't put myself anywhere in the middle of it. I'm just delivering something. Um, well, and I, I found that if I'm not having a good time doing this, yeah. I'm not going to do it. And that's, so it, that's, it's always a good time. And you know, that's why I, I was saying it, it's fun to do. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is fun, really fun. fun to get this information and whatnot <laughs> and present it because I get a kick out of it. You know, there's no doubt. Like it. It's kind of like you know all the gossip and everybody yeah, else. Knows. You know what? That is it because I'm getting the inside scoop and I'm like, well, really? <laughs> I, don't, I, told, I told Marina Port Center Tarot, my guide, all that is, came up with this first thing. It was back way, I, it was January or, yeah, late January. And he, he said, the gateway, the doorway is opening to the veil and it will never close. And he said all these prophetic things. And I put the, that was one of my first channelings. Uh, and I was like, oh, God. He, I said to Marina, I said, I felt like I, he was sticking his foot in it because I mean, like, <laughs> but then every, it was all like every single guy that came through said the same kind of thing. All these people out here are getting the same information coming in. We're all saying the same things. And I, I thought it was really, taking a leap by saying that <laughs> yeah. I mean, but he was yeah they were right i mean he it's a group they and let me right. ask you one, let me ask you one other thing there's a uh, there's a person or not a person uh, an ascending master that you uh connect with mm -hmm. that is uh, i'm sorry i don't remember the name it starts with an s like sonatas or oh, sonat kumara so the one that, that's like Jesus? Uh, oh, Sananda is Jesus. Yeah, that guy. Yeah. Sananda is Jesus' ascended name. I mean, it doesn't matter what you call him. <laughs> you can still call him Jesus. Okay. You know, Sananda, you know, once they're ascended, whatever their name they resonate with, I we give them that name. It's all in our, you know, whatever we give them a name of. But Sananda is one of the ascended master names for Jesus. Just okay. like Lady Nada is also Mary Magdalene. Um, <clears throat> it doesn't matter because it's all that beautiful energy. You could almost think of it as an archetype energy of something like all the divine mothers, the Kuan Yin's, the, the Isis, the Marys, both all the Marys. It's that facet of every single component of the divine feminine or you know they're teaching us some aspect of something okay like that yeah. okay well thanks i just wondered what that was all about well it's their components i mean who's to say that this information is actually a being what we know is it's helpful information I mean, who are ascended masters really? Are they really these beings? I don't know. I mean, I get ET channeling too, galactic information. Um, our minds in the, on the earth plane can make things up to be something or mean something, but we're getting this information in. And um, I choose to <laughs> give them names. They okay. tell me what their names are. You know, I don't know because I'm not off planet. You have to have some trust and faith. I mean, when I do channel, I get the this beautiful energy coming in and it makes me feel wonderful. So you know you're getting higher vibrational energy and you know by the message. And usually if all this great energy is coming in, it's not just some random energy coming in. Right. So, well, don't you believe that it's coming through your soul in order to, for you to, to get, get this message? Um, good question. Uh, I think that when you channel, there's something that opens up that you 
create this doorway through, I would say, your heart. It's a resonance where you are in, a, in the oneness. Rather than call, saying your soul, I would say that when you're in that oneness, like when you've done a meditation and you're going to open up and you're going to accept in messages. I've done a lot of the heart work during that meditation and I've connected. And if you wanted to say the heart is the Holy Grail or, you know, the heart is the connection with your soul self, and everything resides there, I'd say that centering allows that flow. I don't know if you can say it goes through your soul. I don't know. Maybe. I, think, I think it comes through, through you, through your soul. And I think it's something that's been built into everybody. Yeah. And, uh, everybody that, can do it. You know, the, uh, to me, I just, I don't know. I try, you know, I try to take something like this and look at it logically, which I probably should never do uh, because there's a, not a lot of logic to it. Well, you but, know, and every channeler is going to have a different story about how it flows through them or what. I mean, everybody's got a different experience. So, yes. Yeah. Oh, it's very individual, but it's also just seems to me very spiritual. It is, and that's, and that's why I think about the soul, and I think about that everybody has a soul, so everybody can do this if they right. want to. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, I do think personally, I think that from you know how my reality is for this mm -hmm. kind of thing is through the soul, and so, um, you know, you think through the heart, I think through the soul, it doesn't matter, just so. <laughs> it's, I haven't even thought of it. That just came to me. But I have to say that no matter what, if you are opening to channel like you have done, Cleo, you can definitely channel any being that you want and channel through any message that you want. And you just have to make the time to sit down and do it. And, and you know that. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, you can get some good information. <laughs> yeah, get, get I, have the, one, the dirt. <laughs> I have one from my guides that is a forecast for this year, and I haven't done anything with it because I want to see well, what shakes out. <laughs> it's because I'm not going to put a forecast out there until I see what what's going to happen. I got to see if you know it's accurate, but um, yeah. Because I only want to put information out there that is helpful, although I have only gotten information that's helpful. Well, like it, it is pretty amazing. Like when we do the um, the Mystic Four, mm -hmm. you know, how, I, we are all like the synergy with the Mystic Four is like you can feel it. The, it rushes through all of us and you can get the, oh, I'm getting the chills already. We really have some kind of flow going there. We do. Yeah. But, you know, I just, it does blow my mind. I mean, because that's my, it's my first experience with something like that. Mm -hmm. And I just was like, how could this be happening? And I'm thinking, I don't know, but it is. And that we can we can go full circle and one may disagree and one may agree. And then all of a sudden with a bottom line is that. we all come up with the same stuff. We all come up with the same answers. It's just mind blowing. It is mind blowing. It is mind blowing. And it, it just shows you that the people's angels and guides are there with them, you know, giving them the message, giving the messages through us that they're going to need to hear. Um, our guides are working with their guides and it all funnels through. And um, yeah. Well, then it really represents that it's a real thing. This is real. This no. is not, it's this not. is not for people with a wild imagination. Uh, <laughs> it's, it really happens. <laughs> it's really true though. It's really true. Um, and it's good to point that out that, you know, you can really um, go a, a lot of different ways as you read cards. But if you're just 
ready to receive messages when you pull the card and you look at what it's saying and you just oh this is what that means for me to me right now for this person yeah and you're not making things up and it's flowing through you and you're expressing it so yeah well and it also helps that everybody's had a little bit of practice you know everybody's been doing this for a while not necessarily on uh on youtube yeah. not necessarily in groups yeah. but uh just to know you have to trust what you're hearing yeah. even though a lot of times i'm just like what did i just say i what? know and believe me cleo i pull cards and i go oh i i'm what i don't like this card i don't want to say it but i keep it out because you know it's going to be important even it's though somewhere it's, down, yeah yeah so yeah i know what you're saying um it's fun to know that in the chat when you get the feedback saying this really helped me. I really resonated with it. And, you know, thank you. Um, then it makes us feel like, yeah, our energy sharing and what we're doing is making, you know, is of service and making an impact in a good way. And, and uh, validating. It's so validating. Yeah. We need that feedback and to know that we are uh, hitting you know, the sweet spot there for people's growth and information. Yeah. Cause that's, I do, I do wonder if there's some people that kind of jump from, uh, from one live broadcast to another and kind of compare their readings and stuff that they're getting. I would love to know if they, uh, if they're getting a good response for all the way around, or if it's something totally different from one to the other. Um, it, you know what? That's what we talked about before, Cleo. And I think here's what we say about it, um, that there are levels to the information. And so when you, when one group of people are getting this story and another group are getting this story, it's all resonating and it's all true, but it's from a different perspective. Like, from, for me, I seem to read on the spiritual perspective. What's your soul's path? What is your soul doing? How are you doing in your life with your your um, centering and your oneness and whatever? That's I can't help but that seems to be my focus. Mm -hmm. Another person's level may be, well, it looks like you're having fights with your husband. You're going to have to, you know, there, this will work out, you know, try and look from a broader perspective, you know, stay balanced, be the observer, you know, the, every one is valid. It's just different levels. That's, that's what I see. Well, I agree. I, agree. I totally agree. Um, I'm going to just step away for a minute and shut the curtains because we're starting to get the sun here. <laughs> anyway. that listening to you two talk i've just been letting you guys chat because it's really really interesting and a lot of good stuff is coming out but i just want to say hats off to your wicked powerful witchy mama who put all this stuff into your head i mean she may not have called herself a witch but she does all the same things that i do all yeah. of it yeah and, um, noticing that as my daughters are getting older they they're no longer poo-pooing what I do and they're starting to use their own gifts and use their own abilities, things they've either learned from me or developed themselves. Like my youngest daughter started really looking into astrology just for herself and she's actually very good at it. Yeah. Um, but they're both very intuitive. Um, my oldest daughter uh, really uses it, I think even more than my youngest daughter does. And they are very telepathically connected as well. So, you know, it doesn't yeah. hurt to have witchy and, mama. And that you know. is so important, so important to be that, that gateway, that opening for them to get this information. And believe me, they got more than just your words from being around you and yeah. being in your family. So they're blessed. <laughs> Definitely. So, yeah. yeah, I have there. to say, I was just thanking my mom, even though she's on the other side, that just today, for everything that she did uh, metaphysically 
for me and my sister, my sister and I growing up, um, you know, we really got a good foundation for everything. Yeah. So, so does, your, does your sister do the same types of things you do? Uh, she actually, early on, she belonged to the Self-Realization Fellowship, which is Paramahansa Yogananda's uh, organization. Um, and she did, she did meditate and do all that for years. But, you know, I think she had so many problems in her life, just one thing after the other that it kind of like led her off of, you know, focusing on it. But she is spiritually minded, but I don't think she's doing anything like that with it now. But. And, you know, for some people who get those connections, it's just very personal. I mean, the whole journey is very personal. But, you know, not, not everybody wants to share it with the world, you know, or maybe when she's older she'll share it with the world. You, you never know. You never but know. Um, let's go ahead and take some questions from the chat. So okay. I've been starring a few things. So I'm going to start with um, the first one is from Early Ritual. And it says, question, I'll put it up here. It's kind of big. I recently saw someone who passed around 30 years ago, and it's nearly been that long since I had last seen them. Playful, but curious as to why now? Why now? I feel like they're revisiting you. Uh, sort of like whatever was going on for you in that relationship. I feel like they're coming to remind you of something, either something you have to let go of or that feeling of connectedness. You'll be the one to understand what that is. But um, I think that's, uh, that's a big thing for you. So pay attention to what that relationship was for you. Because they're they're coming to remind you of something. Yeah. Go ahead, Cleo. Yeah, I, I you know what Val had just said. Yes, anytime you have something like that going on, that's from some a long time ago, uh, you have to kind of uh, what was the relationship like? What did you learn from that person? What, what what was that person in your life, and how would it affect something now? I mean, it just it takes some thought. Um, I wouldn't just dismiss it, though, because that seems very important for you. Yeah. It, it, the, observer. the observer. The observer is saying to you, um, this may be something that's repeating in your, in your life now, or it's something that you need to look at and observe what's going on in your life now that might compare to that and navigate accordingly, um, in the observer mode, not reactionary, but yeah. I, I pulled a few cards and I also got a message on this myself that I think that this is, this person is showing up for you to, um, highlight that at this moment in your life, and this may echo something that was going on with that relationship that you had with them. But at this moment in your life, you, um, you're you due for a, an awakening that things are going to like open up for you. And yeah, you will feel like the observer and very calm and zen about it. So perhaps earlier in your life when you played with this stuff, it was more frantic, more desperate, more, I have to have it. I have to have it now. I have to do all this stuff. And now with some time, 30 years of time and some distance, now you're more calm, you're more centered, you're more mature. And so now you can look at these cards, the chariot and the magician. Nice. You've got, you've got powerful stuff coming and it may feel still a little bit like it's out of control, but it mm -hmm. isn't you don't be afraid of it it's you yeah. that's why they're coming back to help you awesome 
Okay, so next, uh, let's go to this one from Mika Goddess. Any messages from my spirit guides? I've been feeling two guides next to me. Oh, good. I'm going to let the mediums take this one. Because my, my cat just got up on my table, so I can't put my cards down. So go ahead. No. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, they, they definitely want you to... I don't know if you've been meditating or connecting with them in um, a deeper way, but they have messages for you that you can hear and receive. And they want you to spend some time doing that. And I pulled the Holy Grail for you. And this card is about inner discovery, finding sacredness. You are what you seek. This is what they're trying to tell you. So go within, open up. It doesn't even have to be a meditation, but just sit down on the couch, pull yourself inward, and let that connection happen because they have things to tell you. Good stuff. Yeah, she's, um, there's, I, I depend. I mean, you're feeling two guides. I mean, if these guides that you have felt before, or is this something new? Um, yeah, but there's definitely um, the message. I'm trying to think of what the message is, and um, well, it just depends on what's going on in your life right now. Uh, if there's something troubling you. These, these guides want to, uh, they might not have an answer, but they just, they want to comfort you. If, but if it's the, if it's something else, um, they're, yeah, they're basically there to support you and comfort you in whatever, whatever it is you're doing. So Val, go ahead. What were you going to do? I, I just pulled message in a bottle. So really they want you to connect to them so they can do whatever they're here to, to, give you support you be with you and i think uh, down the road there's a lot of things they want you to do and that may be part of your um spiritual path so and, and they're being very supportive mm -hmm. very loving also but yeah. very supportive and it, it, that's not necessarily saying there's something wrong in your life or something right but that they are just there to help whatever whatever it is you, is going on with you. Nice, nice. Okay, next. C or C S says hi all. I'm currently looking for a new job. Do you see anything soon? I'll like. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I see it right away, especially with all your little hearts going on. You've got the vibes. You're you're drawing it to you. Uh, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna find something you do like, and you are you're doing it for your you're doing it as uh, it's for yourself. But you're just your vibe is attracting something really positive. Okay, if that makes any sense, and uh, keep on looking, and it's right out there, and you will know it when you see it. Absolutely, and I got the Ace of Pentacles, new beginnings. Ooh prosperity open yourself up to these new gifts new job money you can't do better than that for this question excellent okay mm -hmm. okay i don't think i can improve on that so i'm just gonna <laughs> let that stand yeah pretty good. okay create love says any message from my spirit my guides i've felt off last couple of weeks and can't figure out why mm -hmm. Well, was it Mercury retrograde and all that Pluto and Saturn nonsense that was happening? That could have been it. The wicked Mercury retrograde. <laughs> really, just a that was really bad. Yeah. God, it was sitting it right was on top bad. of my moon, right on top of my moon. So it just oh. made me feel bad about myself the whole time. I'm just like, Colleen, what's wrong with you? It was very miserable. Yeah, it was a bad one. Do you feel different now? Yeah. Yeah, I feel 
hot. And things changed as soon as it, it, it went direct on Mother's Day. The next day, everything started going fine at work, at home, with the cats, oh, everything. It just it's like, like a flip, a switch flipped. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Really I got up and I go, oh, I can breathe again. Yep. <laughs> so if it's that create love, then, you know, our messages are just like, okay, you made it. You know. <laughs> but let, I'll throw a few cards. I'll, I'll throw. I won't be that lazy. I'll throw a few cards. <laughs> oh. Well, and if something did occur to that time that's still lingering, uh, just try to let it go. Whatever's going on, try to let it go because you, you don't want to hold on to that. If if it if that is indeed what what's going on that uh, mm -hmm. that made you feel off, yeah. if, if it was Mercury retrograde interfering, um, yeah. When you get, I, when you get, go, go, ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go oh, ahead. I, I was just gonna say I got the fates, which really is about. Um, paying attention to, you know, what you're bringing forward. And so handling everything around you, but treasure Island is coming. But again, I got the observer and the Holy grail. So I keep pulling this card out of all the cards I have. And the Holy grail is in your heart. That's your divine feminine in your heart and inner discovery, finding sacredness. You are what you seek. So what they're telling you is put out what you want to receive, whatever you think about, keep that aligned with all that you want to manifest and um, everything should work out fine. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I got for you, I got um, the three of pentacles in judgment. So the three of pentacles is group work and it also means work in general. So there is some work to be done with other people. So if you have been avoiding other people because you've felt off, you need to reconnect with people. And also the judgment card in there is probably you being hard on yourself and believing that you, you know, somehow deserve to feel like this or allowing that down feeling to just take hold. You, you know, I always say this, even feelings, feelings and emotions in your body are moving thoughts, right? And thoughts can be changed. So the more you program yourself to bring yourself out of that, the better off you'll be. I mean, there may be some lessons there. Mercury retrograde is all about going back and reviewing things. But the final card that comes up for you is the star. So you are going to have, it's, what, why is it so blurry? There we go. The star, which I love this deck. I love the star card in this deck. It's so yeah, beautiful. Gorgeous. And it's, it's, she's pouring the water there. She's got the beautiful flamingo, which I think means eat more shrimp so you can be pink like a flamingo and drink lots of water, <laughs> drink lots of water, healing waters, healing, intuition, all of that stuff. But work with people because if you feel bad and then you kind of withdraw from people, you might end up feeling even worse because you're not with your friends who could cheer you up. So you get a little weird cycle going on there. So get with people and start uh, monitoring your self-talk to be extremely positive because you've got some great things coming, some great stuff coming, right? Okay. Yeah. Yep. That's right. what it felt like from both of you on the cards that both that, that they're telling you that you've got something good coming up. So. Absolutely. Uh, don't 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 hold on to this. Uh, we're, yeah, we're all we're all releasing all this stuff that's coming up. It's every one of us. So don't single yourself out or separate yourself from anyone else because everybody's purging all this stuff. They are, and and you know when you're when you're desiring things and wishing for things and wanting things to come true. It can feel like oh that'll never happen because that's too fantastic. Oh no, it'll happen. It'll happen. This stuff's for real. Just as my sister was saying, you know, all these readings and everything, this is for real. Your desires can manifest. And we have an old saying in the pagan community. Don't stop five minutes before the miracle. There you go. Oh, you just gave me a chill. Believe, believe, 
believe in it, manifest it, visualize it, see it in front of you and you'll, and it'll happen. That's absolutely right. Yeah. Oh absolutely. my God. Yes, absolutely. All right. So on to Vivian, may I have a message from spirit about the changes coming my way, please. And thank you. So okay. polite. Vivian. of course, we'll give Very you that. Polite. Message. Very polite. You know, the changes that are coming are really good. However, as you're going through the changes, I see you kind of tripping and, and, uh, because you're just not sure what, what is going on. So not, not, not that you're physically tripping, but that the, the, the feelings within are just kind of like, kind of like, yeah, I want to do that. Well, wait, no, maybe you're not. Well, yes, I do. No, wait, what in kind of rethinking the whole thing. Round and round. <laughs> yeah, it's a, is that what that card that, means? That card says it's the thoughts go round and round. round. Yeah, it's just like one step forward and then oh, yeah, just a second, you know, put on the brakes and oh well, no, wait, I can do this. So anyway, whatever the changes that are coming are good and positive, but the, in order to get from A to B or C or wherever you're headed with it you have a tendency to kind of halt and then go again and then halt and then go again. Just feel confident that something really positive is going to happen. And uh, that's what your spirits are, are there for. And they're trying to help you with that. So yay, you, you're, you're having a good time coming up here. There's some good things coming up for you, Viviani. So I've got a solar light upgrade so you know i think of the sun as the great solar sun and the great solar sun has more metaphysical meaning than we can even impart to it so when you get a card like this that is ultra ultra powerful solar plexus chakra inner fire and willpower remember that so there's loyalty and loyalty, not just to your family, but be loyal to your heart, your sacred heart, your divine feminine. Time is going by. Pull in your divine feminine receiving energy. Stay out of your round and round and round they go thoughts because you're really blessed and this is why the solar light is coming through. That is complete clarity. That is a deep connection with divine source. Huge. So. Wow. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah I don't want to follow that. So I'm just. Going to <laughs> yeah, okay. That's nice. Really nice. <laughs> I am going to say though, Vivian, that when she's talking about solar, we do have a really beautiful full moon in Sagittarius coming up on june 4th oh. and so i'm going to be putting my video up this weekend all about that please Ooh. watch that video because i think it'll have important messages for you okay all right now uh val we're going to lean on you and and cleo on you as well on this one um i don't know if you guys can do this or not but you can give it a shot mm -hmm. hi val can you channel my former boss oscar he died a, seven weeks ago i truly miss him and cried at his funeral i worked hard and it was never about the money for me i really appreciated jim so his name was jim so i don't know um, what you guys pick up but go go ahead he's coming through like crazy and he's saying he really appreciated you he he really appreciated your energy and all your efforts and he felt um that connection and he's it's making me cry mm. it's very fresh <clears throat> he really has in his heart he really feels deeply okay. <laughs> gotta get out of this energy <laughs> he came in so strong i'm wow. glad i'm glad this panel's hiding me <laughs> <laughs> Aww. Aww. Yeah, he, he just he just really thought the world of you too. That's it. Thought the world of you. It's very you know that's so cool when you have a boss that you you know you just respect them. They respect you. You have a good working relationship, and this guy just um, 
Oh, he just, he seems like a really genuine, yeah. genuinely caring kind of person. And, you know, the fact that you say it, it was not about the money, it wasn't about the money for him either, but you know, that he just, he just really, really enjoyed working with you and he thought the world of you. Yeah. Yeah. He has deep, deep, deep love for you as a human being. And yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Thank you very much, you guys. Okay, mm -hmm. one more we're going to do because we just hit the hour mark. Mm -hmm. And this is from Kimber. Do you see me getting a restraining order against my ex? Damn right. <laughs> you bet. That son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, hold back. Holy cow. Tell us how you really feel, Cleo. <laughs> That's what came that's what came to my mind as soon as I saw that question. I am telling you right now. Um yeah. Okay, Kimber, I guess we answered the question. Well, you know, but this guy's he, he's making your life uh he's just he's interfering, he's making it uh difficult, miserable, maybe. You're gonna be celebrating the death of that whole thing. So don't worry. I mean, the death of the situation. Uh, this is what I'm getting. So don't worry. <laughs> but I do get he really is a son of a bitch. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's what oh, it feels I... like. <laughs> well, that's why she needs a restraining order. Yeah, yeah. I know. Be celebrating. You're going to be happy about it. So it's going to happen. <sighs> And that restraining order is going to irritate the hell out of him, but I, I think he's going to get over it and realize he needs to just back off and go yeah. do his life, whatever he needs to do, and leave you alone. Yep. Yeah. Well, I, I pulled a few cards, and I just want to tell you, Kimber, yeah, you'll get the restraining order, but also this, this in the long run, could affect your uh, bank account. But don't let it affect the way you value yourself. There are things that are more valuable than money in this. And also, he, he, this may not be the only time you need to get a restraining order against him. So watch yourself and put up as much protection as you can spiritually, emotionally, mentally, financially, with your neighbors, with your friends, with, you know, just be really, really careful. And do everything that they tell you when you get the restraining order. Follow all the directions and then some, you know. Um, I've got a little ash if you want to write to me. I can mail it to you and you can use that <laughs> for a little protection spell if you want. But you, you, need, you, need, you do need to be careful, but you'll get the restraining order. And if this goes any further, you know, just remember what I said. You are the most valuable thing in this. And this situation could affect your money. What? So did you get any feeling that this man was dangerous? Yeah. Or did you just get the feeling that he's an, uh, like an irritation? Like you just get, you want to just get rid of him. But yeah, I don't, I don't think he's a mass murderer or anything. I don't right. Think, right. You know, he's not like over violence, but yeah. he's not going to be restrained this only time. You know, he's going to need the restraining order. He may need another one. Cause so. I, I, I feel like he doesn't want to get in trouble with the law at yeah. the same time all this is going on. I mean, he may push the envelope like, like you're saying, Colleen, uh, at some point, but yeah, he doesn't want to get in trouble. So if Kimber does everything by the book and, you know, yeah. And is careful. I don't know if you, if you guys were married or not, but if you have an attorney on the side, keep that person av available to you. Send letters. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and when, when you get that first restraining order, you know, take notes because you might, if you have to get another one, it'll be much easier to do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I can't tell if he's dangerous or if he's just imbalanced or if he's just a jealous kind of person. I think he's but, just jealous kind of you know what immature he's immature. Yeah. Very. a big immature thing coming from him yes very very, very. 
Mm-hmm. So, and, you know, we're not lawyers, we're not police people, we're not, you know, the judicial system. So, of course, ask professionals for, for help with this. But from what we're getting, yeah, restraining order, check. Yeah. Check. Happening. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Okay. So that's, uh, let me just take a quick look here at the comments here. I think we're pretty much... Uh, Kimber, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. Finally realized he needs this. Uh, here's one more. It's, I, think it's, I think it's the only one. I'm sorry if I'm missing somebody's question. We'll do this one more. Sil E says, question from me, please. Will my son, Roger, finally realize he needs his children in his life? Oh, that's sad. That is sad. That is sad. You know, I I hesitate to say it, but I feel like he is on this kind of separate journey um, for a while. And I think he's going through his own things. Eight of Swords nine of wands and uh and he has his own ambition and whatnot but uh just intuitively it's going to be a while if he has a change of heart um i think he's just working on so many things for it his own uh life he doesn't, he doesn't really think it's that important. Yeah, he doesn't. He's got other things. He He's working on other th- The fool. Uh, yeah. He doesn't, oh, he doesn't oh. realize how much it affects the kids to yeah. not have him around. He just yeah. doesn't get that. No. Uh, so, yeah, but he's, he's just on his own his own thing right now, and since it, in his mind, it's not going to make a difference one way or the other. Right. He's not going to spend a lot of time on that. Maybe, but maybe down the road, uh, and maybe down the road, he will he will make some changes. Um, but yeah. he's all consumed right now with other things. And I don't know if you can see in the chat, but he remarried, and that really changed him. I'm trying to find out how old he is. Yes, so sorry about that. How, how yeah. old is he? Yeah. If we knew how old. So what I, I'll just go ahead and say what's crossing my mind. So I don't know how old the children are, but um, if he is in between 30 and 40, hmm. then, you know, probably I had a uh, still E. I just want to. Oh, he's 50. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, no, he's. He's turned a corner that I don't think he's going to turn back. He may, mm-hmm. though, at fifth, at around 58, he will have a second Saturn return. And mm-hmm. at that time, he may he may take account of his life and realize that he has wasted something mm-hmm. and try to rekindle that relationship. That's eight years out, though. So, I mean, that's not great for the kids right now. And the kids, the kids' feelings about him may have deteriorated by then. But then again, maybe they're going through stuff, too. Mm-hmm. Who knows? I mean, maybe maybe they're going to come up on their Saturn return at the same time Dad does, and they'll have a big old Saturn reunion. Who knows? But, well, and uh, I think it's I think it's really important to remember that if he was with the children when they were younger, oh, oh look at their ages, twenty and nineteen. Oh, yes, the twenty year old is going to have a Saturn return right about the same time that Dad is. Oh, so wow. they may they may kind of connect at mm. that time. So. Mm. You know, there are reasons for this, too. There are reasons in each person's life path in this, the 20-year-old, the 19-year-old, and the dad. There are reasons that they are going along this path. And it, while it is sad, and I wouldn't want to wish this on anybody, they have to do their own journey. Yeah. 
it is not it's nothing to do with you it doesn't you know it's probably hurtful for you to watch but well that's what she's saying it's hurting her very much yeah but you you can't you're not responsible for his life and it i know it pains you to see your kids suffer but this is this is a really huge thing this is a karmic thing between the three of them yeah. right there there are there are lifetimes here that are being the karmic ribbons are being resolved and sometimes when that happens karma karma doesn't happen just because you know you dreamed up a parking spot and so you got a parking spot that's not karma karma yeah. is life and death shit yeah. you, know, you cause somebody's life to either change irreparably in a very very destructive way or you cause death or they cause death to you or changing your life irreparably and these kinds of things with relationships between children and then the parents divorce and then they get another family these kinds of things that's karmic it is. So, yeah. so, so this is well, that's why i'm saying it's not just like a life contract thing oh i have to learn how to you know email better or something this is a big, heavy thing, and it's mm -hmm. it's a karmic thing that they all need. That's the other thing. It isn't just the pain that they're getting out of this. They are going to learn some immeasurably valuable lessons out of this, and it is yeah. going to be painful, but they're going to learn so much. Some, somehow, growth seems to be painful a lot when we have to go through these growth times. And well, what did Buddha say? Life, life is pain. All life is, is suffering. All life is suffering. That's why we all came to earth. Although it is a wonderful classroom, it's also just a bunch of suffering. And yeah. that's how you learn. So and, and, and try, try not to, to create a, uh, a distance between your son and yourself just yeah. because, you know, I, I realize you're hurting, but uh, you still want to keep your relationship tight with your son. Um, he doesn't he just doesn't see that it's a big deal and you know that it really is a big deal you know and just but still be uh be the mom to him i mean i know crazy what do you say for 50 years old um, yeah, it's not, they they're still your children exactly and it's not like you can sit him down and say roger now darn it i want you to you know pay more attention to your kids um <laughs> But don't let it don't let it come between you and Roger. So, yeah, you you can't be in his head, and you don't you don't really know what his motivations are in this. But remember this: when the day comes, if the day comes that he does realize how much he's wasted with his kids, he's really going to need you. Yeah, he's Definitely. really going to need you. Definitely. Yeah. So lots yeah. of love to Roger and his children. Yeah. Sending. Definitely. Tremendous healing and love to all of them. And um, I hope for the best for all of them. I really do. That's a very difficult situation. Okay. All right. So I think that wraps up the questions. And thank you, ladies, both of you, for all of your input. This was just... It was a pleasure. It was amazing. It was a beautiful, beautiful hour and 13 minutes. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Me so too. thank you everybody in the chat thank you thank, thank you. you thank you for being here did you simulcast on your channel val mm -hmm. okay good all right great so Aren't thank you, you know, i would have this on my chair yeah, right so you guys i love you guys so thank you all to all of val's viewers who joined us on her channel and thank you to all the viewers that joined on my channel i really appreciate it cleo thank you for being here and Stay tuned. Cleo's channel is coming. I hope everybody subscribed to both our channels and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.